This is a companion video to the Be Credible textbook on reading the most important sections of Forms 10K and DEF 14A. If you haven't watched the video on finding and accessing these forms, you may want to do that before watching this video. To start, let's remind ourselves that all of the forms that companies file with the SEC are meant to inform investors and potential investors about the company's business and financial well-being. The 10K is the annual report, and public companies are required to file it once a year to summarize their business standing and practices. There are four sections of the 10K we will look at closely. The business summary, a summary of the company's risk factors, a list of the company's properties, and the selected financial data table. Keep in mind that information in every 10K is arranged in the same order, so the annual report of the company you're investigating will also have the same sections in about the same place as the annual report we will look at in this video. Let's look at the documents filed by Chipotle for the year 2017. The annual report starts with a section on the company's business. Here we get an overview about what the company does. Chipotle, for example, tells us that it operates almost 2,400 stores that it views itself as a leader in the fast food sector because its focus is a limited menu and wholesome food. One very interesting subsection here focuses on who the company understands its competitors to be and how it tries to distinguish itself from these competitors. Overall, the business section is a great section to read to understand how the company wants to think about itself. The next important section is the risk factors section. Here the company lists in pretty good detail all of the things that might go wrong for it, leading to a loss of revenue. Here, Chipotle identifies potential difficulties related to opening new successful restaurant locations, its history of problems with food safety, and owning other brands that may not make as much money as the main Chipotle restaurants. There is a whole section dedicated to the risks involved in operating restaurants in general. The risks section is long, but it's good reading if you're interested in understanding all of the challenges this company tries to mitigate. Our third stop is properties. Chipotle provides a table of the states and other countries where it owns restaurants and lists the number of restaurants in each. It's interesting to see, for example, that there are 26 Chipotles in Kansas, but only one in Mississippi, but 408 in California. This table gives us a better idea of where the company does most of its business and where the brand is not prominent. The last place we want to look is the selected financial data table. In every 10K, this table is called the same thing, selected financial data. So if you're looking for it in a 10K, you can type those words in the finder and you will be taken directly to it. The table provides financial information for the past few years. In this case, from 2013 to 2017. This allows us to compare how the company's financial standing has changed in the last while. The three most important rows in this table are revenue, total operating expenses, and net income. If we look across the years, we notice that of these five years, 2015 was the best year for Chipotle financially, 2016 wasn't great, but the trend for 2017 was positive again. One very important thing to keep in mind as you interpret this table is that most companies drop a few zeros for the purposes of fitting their numbers in this table. Above the table, it says that the dollar and share amounts in this table are in thousands, which means that you should add three zeros to any figure you see here. So this number isn't 4.4 million, it's 4.4 billion. And the net income isn't 176,000, it's 176 million. And that's the four most interesting and important parts of the 10K annual report. Let's look next at the form DEF 14A. This is called a proxy statement, and it's produced for the annual shareholders meeting. Every public company holds an annual meeting at which its shareholders vote on a number of issues, including executive compensation. That is, how much money the leaders of the company get paid. The only thing we're interested in from the form 
DEF 14A is this information about executive compensation. It's contained in a table called Summary Compensation Table. Again, this is the name used for every DEF 14A form, so search for it using the Finder box. Unlike the last table, this table includes all of the zeros, so read these numbers the way they're written. Let's take a look at Steve Ells, the founder and CEO of Chipotle. In 2016, his salary was $1.5 million, and he also received $14 million in stock awards. This means that he received the company's shares, which he could potentially sell, and which could increase or decrease in value. He also received other compensation, like retirement benefits and a company car. If you read the footnote to this table, you also will see that a couple of the other officers get very nice housing allowances and their transportation costs paid for. And those things are all reflected in the All Other Compensation column. The final column lists the total compensation. For L's, it's $15.6 million, or about 10 times what his salary is. If you're ever writing about an executive officer's compensation, it's good practice to list both the salary and the total compensation once all the extras are accounted for. And this concludes our journey through the 10K and the DEF 14A. I hope that you have a great time learning about your public companies from these documents.